I've created it for a tactile show for the blind. And of course, I guess they see color, but mostly black and white. And it's also created with a lot of texture and it's preserved so those who cannot see can, and but can feel and imit, imagine a shape can touch it. So it is ready for touching and feeling and enjoying by people who can't see the colors. When I start, I wanted to do something, but I wasn't sure about the subject. And when I start a piece, it's a lot of collage, a lot of gluing, construction, deconstruction, pulling away, tearing. And all of a sudden, a form came out of all of the chaos, all of the paper that looked like a cat. So after that, I started manipulating the papers so it would take on the appearance of many cats. And I did this by using an exacto knife and I cut the paper and lifted it off gingerly, the top layer. And that's the same thing that I did here. And this one is just negative space I left in the shape of a cat down here. And I wanted it to uh, keep the eye going around, as all good artists do, keep the eye on the surface of the canvas. And that's why you will see little, these little calligraphy marks going towards the big cat to focus attention on the cat. With all the pollution that introduced to the ocean, so the goddess of the sea is worried about the status and situation as it's going on in the ocean. This relates all the plastic underneath here that goes in the ocean and all the pollution that it gathers around there. Uh, the whole piece of the goddess is a natural sponge that I have colored to match the rest of the piece. Overall, I'm uh, referring to the situation that is going on in, on the beaches and the ocean. Hi, my name is Lillian, Lillian Burns, and I created the unfolding from a vision that I had. And it was a vision of the creation of the world. It was the molten lava coming through, and then some moisture seeping. And that's where you see the teal color coming in and the moisture turn into to the heavens. And that's what inspired this piece. I have a background in graphic design and illustration, and I like to collect um, old images on paper, etchings and postcards. And the bicentennial was coming around and I thought, what a great idea it would be if I combined um, one of my horse sculptures with old, old images of Florida going back as far as I could find the postcards. And some of them on here are over 100 years old. And a lot of my larger horses have carved tree limbs. As you can see here, I collect limbs that are really sturdy and good wood. I age them, I seal them, and then I carve them into the shapes I like. And the inside of the bodies is a carved, very hard, like architectural foam and covered with a cellu clay and wood dowels and epoxy sculpt and some other materials also. And I wanted to make a large horse. And this is one of my tallest of my mixed media horses. I am a horse person and a horse fan and I rode and I showed and I trained and I did all that stuff. And this is a really nice exhibit of contemporary work. There's a lot of different things here. This is one of my favorite pieces. I've been hanging on to it, not letting it leave my hands for now. I'm hoping for a very special home for it someday. And this one, I love the attitude I put onto this, the look and the shape. And I actually made digital copies of the postcards because I did not want to destroy them. And some of them are hand painted and they're very, very old. I've got them going back to like 1901. I really didn't want to, and the cards are interesting because a lot of the things on the back of the cards refer to World War One. they refer to World War Two. they have funny comments on them, um, trains and smudge pots and orange trees and cypress gardens going back way back. So I really like this piece.
course, the Florida Cracker Boys, which is very important to the, the growth of Florida, because that's how the early cowboys and cow people um, took care of their herds. And the word cracker actually came from the, the cowboys used a whip that would crack, and that's how they would herd the cattle. So that's where, where it came from, the Florida Cracker Cowboys and the Cracker Horses. And they still exist in Florida today. Claire Radigan. Uh, the title of my piece is Fire and Flight. Um, I'm the current president of Beaux Arts, and my painting has to do with environmental issues. The motivation for this painting has to do with the threats to the environment which affect us all. The topic of this painting is the Long Pine ecosystem, and it is dedicated to those who work to restore the Long Pine forests first became interested in this after reading a 1939 essay by Zora Neale Thurston about the turpentine camps in Florida, where thousands of acres of longleaf pine forests were destroyed in the process of extracting resin from the trees. Other industries were more devastating, however. Constant clearing for farming, housing, commercial, and mismanagement of the remaining forest occurring since colonial times has caused the extinction or endangerment of thousands of plants and animals that depend on this forest. I added the outlines of the states in and adjacent to the forest, which to me emphasizes the feeling of home, my country, on this planet. Hundreds of landowners and environmental activists up and down the Long Leaf Range are trying to restore this ecosystem as much as possible to try to save some of the endangered species that depend on it. Flatwood salamander, indigo snake, pitcher plants, um, red cockaded woodpecker, which is really very tiny. It's actually about this big in real life. And then this is a gopher tortoise. In my painting, just a few of the species are represented. The bird is the focal point of the painting. It represents hope. Its wings generally overlap the range of the forest. Before the Europeans arrived, nature had a way of balancing itself out. Fires caused by lightning strikes helped many plants in the forest proliferate. This, what you're seeing right here, is a longleaf pine in the grass seedling stage. And when lightning hits it, it's protected. It has kind of a fire uh, retardant protection that grows naturally around the seedlings. So maybe the, the uh, ends might burn, but the center of it stays intact and will uh, in the next season grow to what you see here, which is the sapling stage. And they can still at that stage um, survive any lightning strike. This is why I depict lightning in my painting. Today, the U.S. Forest Service educates landowners on how to use prescribed burning that is necessary in creating room for new growth. I created this painting as my own way of honoring the forest services and the individuals who endeavor to restore this wonderful forest that so many call home.